20,000 employees, 25 correctional institutions, and housing over 20,000 offenders, the Alabama Department of Corrections is the largest law enforcement agency in the state of Alabama. With a commitment to professionalism, integrity, and accountability, we're planning a better future for ADOC and the safety of the state of Alabama. This is the Alabama Department of Corrections Strategic Plan. Hello, I'm Jeff Dunn, Commissioner of the Alabama Department of Corrections. Today, the ADOC faces numerous challenges that revolve around inmate population, staffing, and infrastructure, all of which impact our ability to provide effective rehabilitation programs. In addition to these challenges, we are committed to improving the department's ability to perform our mission, and that depends on a healthy organizational culture. Our staff deserve to work in an environment where leaders motivate, engage, and encourage the men and women serving under them to feel valued with a strong sense of purpose. Accordingly, we have framed our strategic plan around these four focus areas, staffing, infrastructure, programming, and culture. By concentrating our efforts in these areas, the ADOC can transform into a more effective correctional agency. I'm Associate Commissioner Matthew Brandt. The goal of Focus Area 1 is to be fully staffed with high-quality professionals working in the security, medical, and other non-security fields of the ADOC. This area of the plan will focus on ways to recruit, retain, and grow our workforce through better compensation and improved workplace conditions. To increase our staffing levels significantly within three years, the department will develop a clear, efficient, streamlined onboarding program to include an online application system that can be accessed through handheld devices. The department will develop and implement an agenda that will see improved interdepartmental communication and expanded training opportunities. For our security staff, we will seek improved compensation packages as a key piece of our goal to reach an 85% staffing level within three years. We will also procure email accounts for all 1,200 plus correctional officers in addition to conducting staff satisfaction surveys, reduce mandatory overtime, and seek legislative help for additional pay incentives. Increasing our healthcare and recidivism programming workforce is a must. The department's goal is to increase healthcare staffing levels to an average 85% and show a 70% or greater job satisfaction rate for our medical staff. For our non-security workforce, which is approximately one-third of the total force, our staffing goal is to increase our employment rate to 95%. Our people are our number one priority. We will work as hard as we can to recruit and retain as many employees as possible. Hello, I'm Jenny Abbott, Director of Facilities Management. Focus Area 2 will examine what short and medium term repairs and other maintenance should be accomplished and what long term measures, including new prison construction, should be pursued. Our first goal is to improve the working conditions for staff and living conditions for inmates through modifications to the physical plant. This will include the development of a preventive maintenance pilot program at Donaldson Correctional Facility with the intent to expand across the department if successful. Goal B focuses on more effectively utilizing the infrastructure to maintain security of inmates in a humane manner. The cornerstone of this goal is the ADOC's intent to construct three large regional correctional complexes that will meet a variety of correctional missions. A consolidation committee will be created to implement a consolidation plan to transition a large portion of our inmates and staff to the new facilities. This committee will also develop a plan to repurpose some of the closed facilities. Goal C is to provide a robust and secure IT infrastructure that supports on-demand access to information. The new technology will replace the current inmate management system. Improved infrastructure will vastly improve the working and living conditions for those in our correctional facilities and allow us to better rehabilitate inmates for successful re-entry into society. I'm Dr. Wendy Williams, the Deputy Commissioner for Women's Services. The goal of Focus Area 3 is to identify research and evidence-based programs that we can implement in our ADOC facilities. It's very important to use gender-based classification systems and tools in the correctional environment. For the male population, the Ohio Risk Assessment, or ORAS, is used in our department now to evaluate the needs of the male inmate upon intake. In the women's population, the Women's Risk Needs Assessment, which is gender responsive to the female inmate, is utilized to assess the needs of the female inmate upon intake. 
Another reason that gender-based classification systems are important is because the pathways that both the male and, and female inmates have, have traveled that led to criminal behavior are often very different. So recognizing the difference in those pathways and in the male and females themselves, it's important to have a needs assessment that can account for those differences so that we can make sure that we are adequately identifying the needs of each inmate. We have chosen to use research or evidence-based programming because there's evidence that the programs were successful in other correctional settings. So if you utilize a program that is evidence or research-based and you implement it appropriately as designed with the program and you facilitate the program with fidelity, you can expect to have similar outcomes that were experienced in similar correctional settings. Hi, my name is Charles Daniels, Deputy Commissioner of Operations. The objective of Focus Area 4 is to improve the professional operating environment that exists within our various facilities. Improving the ADOC operating culture will be done through the development and implementation of a strategic communication plan, the continued expansion of a holistic leadership development program, and added staff wellness policies, procedures, programs, and by improving our infrastructure. The communications plan will be a top-to-bottom analysis on how the ADOC can better communicate down and in to its own staff, as well as how it can best communicate up and out to other agencies and the public at large. A key recommendation to help improve internal communications is for the department to mandate pre-shift briefings in selected facilities, assess their effectiveness, and if successful, broaden to the rest of the state facilities. Goal B outlines target percentages of the ADOC staff that attend various leadership courses in the department. The final goal outlines various ways that the ADOC can improve staff wellness. These include developing a correctional worker wellness program, correctional wellness points of contact, along with an annual ADOC employee wellness day. The wellness program will also include new health and wellness areas in our correctional facilities for staff to exercise, receive nutritional wellness, and stress-reducing training. We cannot simply hire more staff, create more programs, and improve our infrastructure. We must have a positive, healthy work climate to create conditions to exploit the benefits created by pursuing the other three focus areas. Our people are our greatest resource, and they must be properly valued and effectively led.